Greetings from Gaba Community Church. My name is Pastor Peter Kasirivu. What amazing times we are in. And these are times where we have to be prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week I began a, a lesson to teach us on what is the preparation that we have to have as we prepare for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching on Facebook and on YouTube. So now I'm doing lesson number two. I know that many of you have got so many questions and I want to say this. I believe that these questions will be answered as we go along. Just as a recap, what we say is that the last days are already here with us. The last days began 2,000 years ago. When Jesus Christ went to heaven, the church was born, and that was the beginning of the season of the last days. So that was something we talked about. We also talked about the fact that they are signs that are showing us that the end is about to come. And these signs are real signs. And some of the things that are going on today, as we think about coronavirus, as we think about wars, these are real signs that are actually showing us that the last days are already here with us. I would like to read for you a portion of scripture as we begin our conversation today. And this portion is found in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. This is what he says. No one knows about that day or the hour. Not even the angels in heaven know the Son, but only the Father. Now that's Jesus teaching us. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two will be in the field, one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill and one will be taken and the other will be left. Therefore watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. You do not know on what day your Lord will come. Lord, I pray that you give us clarity as we discuss and talk about the end of the days. Lord, I pray that we will be prepared. I pray that we will not be fearful, but we will be ready for that coming when you come. Thank you, Jesus, and I'm praying that you will speak to us again in Jesus' name. So friends, these are the last days. We are living in the last days. And our Jesus is closer than the day you got saved. Our Jesus is closer than yesterday. The signs of the end are actually here with us. So the first statement that we get from what we've just learned is that we don't know the specific day, we don't know the specific hour. So if any preacher rises up and say, I know Jesus is coming back tomorrow, he is a false prophet because that day it's only God the Father who knows about that day. So no one should ever tell you that they know the day. The other thing that we need to really understand is that although we don't know the exact day, we actually see signs. And these signs are very helpful for us to actually be prepared. So Jesus is saying, the day we don't know, people will be doing their own personal businesses. People will think life is the way it is. Then the day will catch up on them. But then we have some signs. Which signs actually help us to actually be prepared? I want to read for us again another portion of scripture that we found in, the, uh, in, in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. But let me read from verse 1. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to us. He says, Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. 
A thief does not announce that I'm arriving. He just comes. A thief does not announce. So in the same way, we don't know what will happen until it gets to us. So he says, be ready anytime. Be prepared. Make sure you put on your protective gear because you do not know. So he says that while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come. Suddenly, as the labors, as the labor pains of a pregnant woman, they will not escape. Then he says, but you brothers are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. So what that means is that when you know the thieves may come at night, what do you do? You make sure you put burglar proofing on your house. You make sure you lock your house before you go so that you're not caught in surprise. So what does that mean to all of us Christians? Our worry should not be the debt. What we need to do is to be prepared. And you know, it's very interesting because many times we think about the end of the age, the last day and all that. I saw people fidgeting when we were approaching the year 2000. People thought that the end of the age has come in the year 2000. It could not be that obvious. But what you need to be actually more careful about is how do I live? Am I living for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ? Does my life glorify God? Because when my life is glorifying God, if I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, if my life is well lived, then I don't care when he comes. But also there's something else we need to know. That even though the day of the Lord doesn't come like tomorrow or next year, there's a day when your life will end on this earth. Some people, even during these days when we have this crisis of corona actually there are people who are actually dying before even corona ever gets to them actually as we speak today in uganda god has actually put a covering on uganda we've not had someone dying i was talking to a doctor this morning and he said it's actually only one percent that have died you know now some countries like italy the percentage is a little bit higher. But what that means is that if 3% of the people who are infected in Italy died, there is 97% who actually have been healed or will be healed. Those people may die of malaria, they may die of an accident, they may die of a heart attack, they may die of other things. Now, the day you die, the Bible says it's appointed for one day for us to die, and then after that there is judgment. So what that means is that we need to live with that kind of urgency, with expectation, knowing that our day will come. It may not be the last day or the rapture or anything, but it will be a day when God says, what do you do with my son, Jesus Christ? So friends, be ready because we never know. Now going in detail in our lesson, then we need to talk about the signs of the age. There are going to be signs of the age, signs that really talk to us or show us that Jesus is about to come. Let me mention some of them. One of them is false prophets. We actually read that last week. There will be false prophets. These false prophets, are, let me just read, I think that would be very helpful for us to read. Uh, these false prophets, we find this in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 5. Actually, I told you, it would be good for you to read that whole chapter because it's very, very helpful. So, verse 4 says this, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. Many will come. That's one of the signs. People who will come and they pretend they are coming in the name of the Lord. Now, this is a very big sign. During Jesus' time, there were false prophets. But I have to tell you today, 
the number of false prophets has increased in Uganda like never before. The number is huge. We have people who call themselves Christ. We have people who are saying that I'm coming in the name of Christ. There are people who say, I'm hearing from Jesus in my bedroom. There are people who say, I had a conversation with Jesus Christ. False prophets are on the rise. They are in Uganda and they are in other places. So when you see the increase of false prophets, just know that the end is about to come. The other sign that we see is the sign of wars and rumors of wars. We find that in verse 6, wars and rumors of wars. He says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Because such things will happen, but the end is still to come. Now, how many wars have we had? Actually, at any one time, there are wars somewhere on the planet. We've had the First Second World War. We have had wars in Asia. We have had wars in Africa. We've had all kinds of wars. He says you will hear them. But those are just signs that he is about to come. But does not necessarily mean that that is the time. Wars and rumors of wars. Then he talks about natural disasters. When we come to natural disaster, these are huge. We've heard of the tsunamis. The, the rate at which tsunamis are coming is going higher. What about earthquakes? There are earthquakes everywhere on every continent. What about uh, hurricanes? You know, some of us in Uganda, we don't know what hurricanes are. But hurricanes actually are formed on the continent of Africa, from West Africa. And then these waters are gathered over the Atlantic and they pour their waters in the and they, they pour their waters in the Gulf Coast and on the North and on North America and other places. Hurricanes are increasing every day. What about other things like winds and all kinds of things are happening? These are natural disasters, volcanoes and things like that. Now we have another disaster the attack of disease whoever knew that one day we'll have a disease called hiv aids whoever knew that we'll have ebola and now we have the coronavirus that is making us unsettled so natural disasters will come what that means is that the day of the lord is approaching then he talks about something else persecution the persecution of believers. Now we read this, and uh, actually we find this in the book of Matthew again, chapter 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you'll be hated by all nations because of me. Persecution is also increasing. It is actually more than it has ever been. Today, there are more people dying for their faith than at any one time in the history of the world. We find this more in India. We find this in the communist nations. We find this in the Arab world, among us, the Muslim nations. People are dying for their faith. Now, you may not be experiencing it in Uganda, but it's happening all over the world. So all of this is saying, I am about to come. Then he says, there's going to be something else happening, another sign, evangelization. You know, Jesus will not come until the whole world has heard. What that means is that if we do our evangelism well, we are going to actually quicken the coming of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, before it was very difficult for the gospel to spread around the world. But let me tell you today things have changed. Today, you can be anywhere on the planet within a matter of 24 hours. If I started traveling today, I will reach Japan before 24 hours. I can reach Los Angeles in 24 hours. You can reach anywhere on the globe within 24 to 48 hours because of the speed of our airplanes. 
Now, whoever knew that that would happen? But not only that, what about the power of the internet? This has changed the face of the world. Today, I can sit here and I communicate to the globe just in the comfort of my office using the internet. We have instant communication. What that means is that we can actually move very fast. Recently, my friends uh, gave me a small gadget. It's a tiny little gadget, which actually creates a hotspot. And this gadget, if, if I went with this little gadget in the market down here, and I just uh, sent it out, it will send a Wi-Fi, and it will just poke, start poking people who have a smartphone. And when they click on it, they will, oh, I have free, free, free Wi-Fi. Really what it is doing, it is saying, I can actually provide data for you. So on this little gadget, we have the Jesus, uh, the Jesus film. You remember the Jesus film? We have the Bible, and we actually have some beautiful messages from the Bible. So when people click on it, people can actually download the Bible onto their phone. So many of our friends are taking this to the Arab world where people don't want the gospel. And they go to these crowded places and they send this Wi-Fi. No one knows where it is, but it is there. And people can download the Bible in their language anywhere. So where we are currently, we are speeding up the access to the Word of God everywhere and anywhere in the world. So we can preach using satellite, we can preach using internet, and we are using modern technology. All of these are signs that Jesus is about to come. Now, there are many others, but these are some of the few signs that show you that Jesus is ready to come. Let's talk about the manner of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How will he come? Now, remember, Jesus, one day, he went to the heavens. The day he went to the heavens, that was, remember, we've just been in Easter. The day he went to the heavens was 40 days after that. The disciples were gathered together. He was on the mountain. It's called the Mountain of Olives. And the Bible says that he was with his disciples and he actually rose it's like there's a power that lifted him up and took him to heaven. And the angel told them that just like he went up, there is a day that Jesus will come down. So the reality of his coming will be real. He will definitely return. So let me just talk about this manner. It will be personal, meaning he will come personal. So it's not like a spiritual something. It will be very, very real. And the book of Acts actually tells that to us. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. He will physically come. Personal and physical. And then, the other thing that we need to understand is that when he comes back, it will be real in such a way that people will see him. He will be visible. He will come physically, but he'll be visible. Let me just read for you that verse of scripture to just help you. Uh, verse 27 actually helps us. Again, Matthew chapter 24, verse 27. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. He will be visible. He will be seen. He will be seen. You will see him when he comes. Let me just mention a few others and then I will probably try to answer some of the questions that you may have. Uh, the other one is, it will be sudden. Sudden, like that. We read about that in, in Thessalonians. Again, Matthew chapter 24, verse 20, uh, 37 mentions it. It will be sudden. He will not be announcing himself. It will be, boom, he's here. It will be glorious. It will also be victorious. So that is the coming of Jesus Christ. 
we are going to go more in detail about what that means actually what we are trying to describe is that coming how will it be like how will it look like so for today let me pause there because i know that it is actually generating lots and lots and lots and lots of questions so i will desire that you write down your question send it out send it on our whatsapp pages but not only that you can send it on our facebook page we will be able to answer that next time we come back to you but for now i want you to remember this that the second coming of the lord jesus christ is not known remember that remember that there are signs and i've mentioned all of those signs and a few more again i have mentioned the manner in which jesus will come it will be personal it will be physical it will be visible everyone will see it will be glorious it will be victorious i cannot help to see that day and my prayer is if you don't know jesus christ you will ask ask him to become your personal lord and savior because that is your ticket to heaven i love you with the love of the lord now let me go back to questions what are some of the questions you have what questions do you have? I know you have very many of them. Now, there's something that I mentioned a little bit, and I think I wasn't as clear. Something, someone was asking about a chip. Now, for you who are modern, you know what a chip is. C-H-I-P. Now, if you have an ATM card that you use in your bank that atm card has a little something it's called a chip it's usually it looks like copper that's a chip it has a lot of information on it that's what a chip is now you also have a phone mtn has a chip so when you go and get your phone card that little thing is a chip it has information that makes your phone communicate with the networks of MTN. Airtel has it and others. Now, in other countries, they actually have a chip that they actually are putting in their, uh, their, their passports. Now, where we are currently, we have all these kinds of chips everywhere. These days when I'm buying my fuel, I have a fuel card. It also has a chip for Total. So many places we have chips, and these chips are computer systems that actually it's like something that is stored in there, it stores information. So someone was asking, what about what they're talking about putting chips inside our bodies? Now friends, let me tell you this, that is beginning to happen today in some places now but let me tell you this the coming of the man of evil will be a time a time of scientific advancement and because it is going to be scientific advancement anything will happen now we are talking about that tiny little chip probably there will be something else maybe it will be something as small as a dot but one thing i know is that the advancement of science is actually increasing the ability for this to happen. Now, there is what we call face technology. I, I, I don't know what they call it, but it is where someone now can look at you and actually decide what is inside of you. For example, I have a phone these days, and this phone, instead of you know, I used to have a phone and you just press the button. These days, uh, things have changed. You, not, you don't even need to put your fingerprint. It just looks at your face and knows this is so and so. There is a new technology like that. So where we are going, the scientific advancement are actually increasing the speed at which the man of evil comes. Now, should we reject science? No, you shouldn't. But what this means is that when the manifestation of the man of evil comes, 
he will apply that science to actually expand the speed at which he does what he does. Now, it does not mean that any entity, any government, any corporation that uses chips is one of those men of evil. I want to say this because many, many times people have rushed to say so and so is the man of evil. You know, sometimes they thought it is Russia. Russia is down, my friend. Sometimes they thought it is United States. Now, United States is not going up. It's going down. There's a new rise in other nations. You know, for example, someone said United Nations is that. Others say it's the European Union. European Union is being shaken. Now China is rising. Who knows? It may be China. It may be United Nations. It may be whatever it is. But what I want you to know is be prepared for the coming of the Lord. You never need to worry about those things. But when that man of evil comes, we will know. But I'm going to tell you something more next time. I'm going to talk about the rough church. It will definitely help you. Then someone asked, who is the 666, triple six? Now, the Bible talks about that man of evil. One of his signs is the triple six. Now, the way things are today, triple six may not be an obvious triple six. These days, when you send a message using WhatsApp, it's encrypted. Meaning that there are numbers that are out there that are there, but you can't read them. There is technology where things are written, but we can't even read them. So where I am going is this. Things are so complex that that triple six that it was written was written triple six because in those days that that's what could be understood. But today it may be computer language, which we can't even decipher decipher because it's encrypted so what i'm trying to say today is this things will not be as obvious as you think but the key, the key thing is this do you know jesus as your personal lord and savior do you know him if you know jesus as your lord and savior you don't need to worry because you are in safe hands i pray that god will bless you today I pray that his face will shine upon you. I pray that you'll be ready because the day we don't know. But also, we don't know when Jesus will come and call you home. But in the meantime, let us be faithful to the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings from Gaba Community Church. I cannot wait to worship with you again. God bless you. We love you.